I recently got a comment on my last video. Uh, the comment was, it blows my mind that someone who hit Grandmaster in the Voltaic benchmarks is silver. It really shows how game knowledge is superior to mechanics. Guess I need to go back to the drawing board on what my issues are. Now this guy is uh, Ascendant Immortal player trying to get better, and that's definitely one way to look at it, uh, but I don't think that that's a very helpful way to look at it. Uh, it very might well may be that what's holding this guy back is his aim, and he would benefit from aim training more. For me, aim training more is not going to get me better at the game as quickly, but why? Every skill or game that you can think of is made up of smaller subskills. In FPS games, you have aim, movement, positioning, awareness, decision making, communication, map knowledge, strategy, predicting your opponents, crosshair placement, your mindset, and there's so much more, right? Uh, a good analogy is in basketball games like NBA 2K, where your character has uh, shooting, handling, dunking, etc., all on a scale from 1 to, nine, to 99. You want your player to increase all of those small subskills up to a 99, ideally. It's the exact same in any game or skill that you can think of. You want to improve all of the subskills that you can up to a 99. So with Valorant, I just lack several skills because I'm brand new to the game. Pretty much everything but raw, fine motor control over my mouse. I'm just not very good at yet because I'm new. So even my aim isn't really that great in Valorant yet because it still takes hundreds of hours adapting your brain to the game to build that speed and accuracy. And also movement and crosshair placement are heavily involved with aiming, which are two skills that I'm still working on heavily. So why is the title of this video that aim is only 5%? Because aim is just one small subskill within FPS games. Is it exactly 5%? No, that's just, that's just a way to look at it. Depending on the individual situations that happen in each game, it may matter more or less. If you have a shotgun at point blank range, obviously aim is just a small factor there. If you and two other teammates all peek an enemy at the exact same time, if all three of you are terrible at aiming, aiming you might still lose to, lose to this person, but it's still not the biggest determining factor in that engagement. Your teamwork is the biggest factor in that engagement, and your aim is a small piece. So going back to basketball, if you were coaching a high school student who could shoot lights out from all ranges, three pointers, whatever, but he couldn't dribble the ball very well and he got the ball stolen quite often and he couldn't make himself open for shots, would you say, oh, shooting doesn't matter that much in basketball. It's obviously a lot more about passing and dribbling. Look at this guy. No, that wouldn't make any sense. You know that shooting is a fundamental skill within basketball. You would just tell that player, hey, you should emphasize dribbling because it's your biggest weakness. By bringing that skill up, you will see the biggest jump in your skill level. Which this brings me to my next point is that subskills don't just add, they actually multiply together. And the more subskills that you have at a decent level, the better you're gonna be than someone who only specializes in one subskill. Now why? Because having multiple subskills at uh, an acceptable level gives you adaptability. You're not forced to play with just one style. So if, if all you're good at is long range gunfights, then you're gonna tailor your playstyle to always favor long range engagements, which is fine. But if the enemy team starts to get laid out at long range, they can simply adapt and just start playing short range or use utility to nullify your strength. But if you're comfortable at long, mid and short range gunfights, then the enemy's team counter, it doesn't matter. It's, it's nullified because you're simply just too good at multiple sub skills. So just like Shaq playing basketball did not shoot three pointers in basketball, he used his strengths and catered his play style to just dunk on everybody. Obviously he was a great player. But if you look at someone like Nikola Jokic, who is also seven feet tall and is big and can play in the paint, he can also rebound. He can shoot and pass at an extremely high level. And so he has that adaptability. You can see it in his games. He tailors his game to counter whatever his opponents are doing. And that's why I think he's winning in the NBA Finals right now. And he's a multi-year MVP player. So I wanna leave you guys with a simple process that should help improve at any game or skill that you're currently practicing. So number one is record yourself and then review the footage. While you're reviewing the footage, find the sub skill that you feel is holding you back the most. It may be a consistent mistake you're making or you can just you just know that I'm not communicating at all, I need to start communicating, or my crosshair placement is always off, I need to work on that. So after you figure out which sub skill that is that you feel is holding you back, watch some guides on how to improve at that weakness, come up with a plan to improve, and then while you're practicing each day, consciously focus on that weakness so that you can improve it. Now it's it's really easy to get distracted while you, while you play and just go back to bad habits, 
So it helps to come up with a simple phrase that you can repeat to yourself while practicing so that you keep bringing that focus to mind. So an example is if you were working on crosshair placement, keep repeating to yourself, head level, head level, head level, so that you keep reminding yourself to place your crosshair where you expect the enemy's head to be. And by repeating that over and over, you start bringing that awareness to mind and you, you can more easily focus on it without you know reverting back to old habits. So over time, that weakness will become your strength. And then you can pick a new sub, sub skill to emphasize. Now, this is how everyone that I know who's play, plays at a high level has improved, whether consciously or subconsciously, they figured out what was holding them back and they challenged themselves to improve it. Now, do you always need to focus only on your weaknesses? Not necessarily. Again, you want to get all the sub skills that you can up to a higher level, and you also want to stay actively engaged in the game and have fun. So if you want to switch to a different emphasis, or maybe you want to only focus on crosshair placement for a certain period of time and then switch to something else, that's also completely acceptable. It doesn't mean that you only focus on one thing at a time until you make it a 99 and then you switch over. It's, it's, there's no one clear linear way to do it. There's multiple sub skills to improve at any one time and you, it's up to you as a player or a coach to figure out what's best for your own development, right? So thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this video, please like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more from me um, and join the brand new Discord. Uh, there will be a link in the description in the comments. Appreciate you. Peace out. All right, these are my ranked games the past week. I played 11 games, and I played a lot of Swift play this week because I'm trying to figure out what role to play and what character I like. I played a little bit of Neon, Omen. Um, I really like KO. I just like his kit. He's, it's like a straightforward kit that I'm used to in every FPS game. You know, you have a Flash, you have a, a Grenade or a Molotov. You've got, and I like that he cancels their abilities out, and he's got like a scouting tool with his knife. I just, I think he's cool. I just like him, you know, but I don't know. I don't know that I want to be an initiator. I don't I don't like being a duelist that's always first to enter the site because there's just so many angles to clear. And it's like I'll get shot by somebody holding some weird off angle and there's nothing that I can do about it. It's not like they have more skill. It's just like they're in a different position than I was like used to. Um, so I like going like second in and I like using utility to take space first rather than just rushing in with my movement. So I think I'm, I think I like the initiator role a little bit better. Um, but I really just like KO. I don't necessarily want to play Sky. I, I like the fact that I can use his, his flash offensively. I can use it and peek at the same time. Whereas with like Sky, it's um, like she flashes, but she has to wait you know, so I, I don't know. Same thing with Fade. She's got her dog and, and everything, but she has to like throw it and then push. But like I can throw the, the flash and move at the same time, which I really like. So I just like KO a lot. Anyways, let's get to the VOD review. So I'm actually gold one now. This this game I ranked up twice, so I did a double rank up. So apparently my MMR is like gold three or higher. So it I completely skipped silver three and just went straight up to gold one after this game. I don't know why it says silver two, um, but this is the game that we're going to watch here on Lotus. And I didn't record the first round by accident. But uh, playing KO and going to play C, C uh, side here. My crosshair was actually, my crosshair placement was actually really low in the other games that I watched. Um, this one was actually decent because I had just started focusing on it again. But man, the crosshair placement on head level, like I have to just constantly keep thinking about it. So still need to drill that in. It, it was decent in this game, but um, in other games that I watched back this last week, it was just so low, man. My main focus for this week was like mini map awareness. And then I had some fun playing deathmatch and, and making callouts. So while I was playing deathmatch, I was hitting my push to talk key and saying, oh, sky is heaven. You know, or if I died, it would be like jet, um, a link, you know, whatever. And so I got better at making callouts. And so I actually am calling out in this game exactly where they're at. And that's another reason that I like KO is his knife is like a great scouting tool. 
So I'm just really stoked to play KO. Decent crosshair placement using the back of the angle. And my team is just really good, so we win. Next round, decide to lead with the knife. I didn't mean to hit it there. I meant to go longer with it. Two of them got taken out at B, so I start to rotate. I'm smoked off. I think I make a mistake here, and I probably should have just waited for the smoke. I thought I heard footsteps behind me. I did not. So yeah, there I should have just waited for the smoke. Killed the gecko, and then flashed myself in, but... It was an awkward timing. I'm not sure what I was, why I was trying to throw a flash into the smoke, unless I was going to peek the smoke. But I should have just waited for the smoke. So I go B this time because Reyna's holding C. There. Rain is calming that there's people coming C. I think that's the correct use of my Molotov, basically preventing them from moving from the back site into to start planting while I give my, my teammates time to rotate in. So I think that's a good Molotov. I think my knife was good because obviously I got all four of them suppressed, which also makes them want to slow down, which is good. And I back up into the smoke here because I'm just trying to bide time. Pre-firing. Kill this guy, and then I get killed by the, the jet. So I think something that I'm going to add to my game is if I'm in a tight area like this where everything is like really short angles, I'm going to play tighter to cover and wide peak more. Um, there's this concept in free for all games like in Call of Duty where you don't want to have lines of sight to like your back. So you want to not only position yourself to take a 1v1 against someone, but you also want to close off other angles. So here, obviously, I'm like getting peaked two ways. So if I'd moved closer to the pillar and peeked, I would have killed this guy and then I could have repositioned a peak jet here. So it's just a small thing, but I think in tight quarter areas, I'll play closer to cover. So I forgot the name of the callout, so I looked at my map and then calmed Jet is in C lobby. So I'm still learning the callouts for stuff, but definitely something that I added to my game, and I think it helps a lot, especially with Ko with his knife. It's really, I think it's really important to to calm. And I think that's that's. If I had to guess, I would say awareness of the minimap is probably something that lower ranked players aren't the best at. So by calming things, I think it probably helps. Although they may not know all the callouts either, but at least it's it helps them, I, I would assume. I call out that I'm going to open the door because I see the phoenix is there so that we can like both kind of peek this area. I didn't know that he had he was smoked off, which I may not have done. But either way, I get the kill. It's fine. One enemy remaining. <laughs> I didn't didn't uh, hit anybody with a knife, so I'm gonna rotate early.
I throw this flash because what I, what I the idea in my mind that popped up was I want to go over here and hold a weird off angle over here. That was the idea in my mind. So I thought, oh, I'll flash so that I can get over here. But I end up flashing myself. So I should have like turned to the, toward the wall or or something. Or I should have put it behind me so that I could have peeked the angle first. Either way, mistake. Luckily, Astra smoked this off. <laughs> um, but I, I would have flashed whoever was looking at me. But I may have gotten hit as I rotated over here. This was just kind of like a bad move. And then I see the Cypher camera here. So I decide to shoot it. And then I'm not going to hold this off angle anymore because they know that I'm here. So there's no point. So I say I'm going to... So I hit the door. And get out. The door is kind of like a distraction. Proud of that, honestly. So right here, I, I distance myself so that I'm on the edge of this wall as I'm pre-aiming, which is good. And then before I peek, I actually stop shift walking and then I take a full step and hit her in the head. So pretty good here actually. So I'm I'm holding this I'm I'm trying to like peek and be fast and like get kills. That's not good. That's that's good. And then as soon as I see two of them, I like instead of like trying to shoot them, you know, I I shoot as I'm moving. And you can see in the graph here it's blue, so I'm, I do have the movement error, but I think that's definitely the best way to probably play that is to move while I shoot cuz I would have died cuz there's two of them looking at me. But I can still get some shots off, you know, and I get lucky, which I did get lucky, which is nice. Ten seconds left. Clear to engage. Weapons hot. I got smoke set up for everything on wall. Let's call it. Okay, smoke up. Smoke what? Okay, smoke. I know exactly. Okay, so I pushed up here, and then I see that they're A. And they're actually like pretty far up in A, so I decided to go through here. I wonder if I should have just pushed here, but it's probably equal, like an equal distance thing here. But the problem is if I go this way, then I feel like I have to shift walk some, some parts of it. But if I go this way, I can just sprint the whole way. So I think I chose to go this way because I can just sprint the whole way and get there faster. And they're like up here, not back here. So I think I make the correct call to go back and rotate on the back side here. And that, like that, these these were honestly things that did flash through my mind. So I think I'm my game sense has definitely improved from the second week for sure. And the whole time I'm looking at the mini map, and then the phoenix, I, the phoenix is looking here. I definitely should have pulled out my gun earlier, but I get lucky. So it helps to know how to bunny hop and move, and that's just something that's like I do I would do in Apex Legends as well, so it's kind of natural to, to do that type of a movement without thinking. Small micro adjustment I could make here is so I can... So I'm shooting her, I, I tag her. I do pre-fire again, which is nice, but maybe I should have paused a little bit. But I think I need to, I need to like keep moving, like burst, strafe, burst, even in this situation. Cause I'm just holding the angle and I'm also holding it really low, but I was trying to adjust for recoil. So that's, that's part of the reason. But I do move almost immediately, which is nice. She tags me. I try to wall bang, but the Phoenix has my back. Deployed. 
So I heard two gunshots. So I heard a phantom and a vandal, so I calm that there's two people see lobby. And I think I was using a higher sensitivity of 0.37 here, 800 DPI, and I I I'm I'm thinking I'm going to stick to 0 0.3 or like a lower sense cuz I just am way more consistent cuz like look, I way overshoot here. Which is fine, like you're going to miss. And like another small thing that I was thinking about after I watched this was I kind of get up onto the mound here and it, it throws my aim off a little bit. So I, I could stay just like one or two steps back from the mound and I keep that level playing like the level head head level. It's it's much easier to, to work with. I mean, I am trying to like peek over the top of it here. But like right there, like I move onto the mound, which kind of is like awkward to throw your aim off. And I should have just, obviously I'm using W as well while peeking, which is not as fast as A and D. So I should just only used D for this peak. Like small micro thing like is really small micro adjustment, but I think it's, it's valid. Lose the gunfight. Okay, so I heard like multiple gunshots. And then the gecko peeks me. I probably should have been moving out sooner. But I'm I'm calming right now. I'm I'm like there are multiple people C lobby or I think there's I said there's like three C lobby. Because I heard three different guns. And then I'm staring at the wall here because I'm like looking at the minimap and calming and thinking, not like holding crosshair. And I start to back up, but I should have probably gotten out sooner. Could have died there. It's fine. I calm that gecko is mound. Then I'm waiting. I'm gonna use my Molotov to to try to split them up was my idea. Like I was watching a Wuhujin video and he was coaching a JPC on his Boomer to Diamond series and he's talking about using the Viper Molotov to split up the team as they walk through. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna wait for one to walk through, throw this thing, and that'll split them up. But then Gecko ults and I can hear him ult the Thrasher. So I decide to throw it then so he's not gonna peek with it and shoot this guy. So my game sense is like way better. Are they on scene? And then I'm just backing up because I gotta wait for my team to come in because there's like three people there. So I'm just sucked. just waiting. Whereas like the first week, I wouldn't have thought to do any of this this stuff. I would have just like swung. Like all I knew how to do was like swing and get into a gunfight. So that I would have been like, okay, there's a gecko there. I'm gonna try to like be aggressive because I'm and just like swing and, and try to get the fight. But here I'm actually like backing up because there's multiple people. I don't know what the Astra's doing. She's just chilling. The Reyna is AFK and spawn, just chilling. So I don't, I don't know, man. Oh, the Astra's probably up in the air, like doing her little orb thing or her whatever. Yeah, that's what she's doing. My my idea would be to flash myself in, but there's a Phoenix behind me, so I don't I don't know that I can flash here. My knife just came off cooldown, so I probably should have used that to scout. I could I could have placed it on the wall here to see if there's anybody close left or I could have like thrown it out there to suppress them. Um, I could have probably maybe bounced the flash off this wall and then peeked in left. I, I'm not sure, but I, I definitely want to use utility if I have it, if I'm going to enter a, a site like this. So I, I jiggle peek that here. My crosshair is really low. I need to be more methodical with how I peek multiple angles. So I need to be like, bam. Bam, 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 like jiggling, you know, clearing out angles methodically. Instead, I kind of just like round the corner and I'm like looking here and here, but not like not pre-aiming it, you know. And then I could also get hit from here and I don't even clear it. So that's a mistake that I didn't get punished for here, but definitely will if there's somebody over there. I hear them in the water, so I'm looking here. 
And my crosshair is kind of low, like it's, it's awkward because of the ramp, but I, I think what I need to do on this area is keep my crosshair on this back little line here because the, the, the most likely place for them to be is, is on that back wall because it's the furthest away. And then I kind of like dip in, so my crosshair is low for a second. And then I move and panic shoot when I should have just moved out of the way and then probably like did something else, but I die because of it. Okay, here I make a, like a pre-round plan that I'm gonna flank and, and like be in an off angle, which is maybe scary as a KO because I don't really have good escape tools, but I can throw my molly and then try to back up. Taking my time to clear angles, which is good. I don't know that I should have cleared that or not. I mean, I wouldn't expect someone to be holding the back of the spawn, but whatever. And then they surrendered, which is nice. And that got me to rank up pass over two, pass over three, all the way to gold one. Let's go, baby. Yeah. All right. So things to focus on for next week. So I was watching other games and my crosshair placement was still pretty low. So that is something that I definitely still need to focus on is keeping my crosshair at head height. Um, methodically clearing uh, sites would be better. So maybe some practice in custom games, clearing sites, uh, just methodically jiggle peeking. Um, still want to continue uh, making call outs during deathmatch because it's fun and it also helps my it helps my ability to think about where the enemy team is as well. But it, But learning the call outs is still something that I'm <clears throat> working on. I want to figure out what role I want to play. Duelist makes the most sense because I'm mechanically skilled and I'm aggressive. Um, but I don't want to be the first to enter the site always. I don't like that aspect of just like blindly rushing in. I like using utility to take to take site. Um, so maybe I take I use a duelist that has a lot of utility to take site. Maybe like Phoenix because he's got multiple flashes. Um, but I also really like KO, so maybe I just stick to KO. So that's it. So low crosshair, still need to work on that. Call outs. Um, I need to play more ranked. I've been, I played a lot of swift play and not, I, I want to play at least two ranked games a day, if not more. But I, I'm trying to like learn all the abilities of the agents and, and mess around. So I'm playing a lot of swift play because it's, it's just um, easier for me to, to figure out the different abilities for the agents and stuff. But yeah, I think... I'll figure out, I mean, it's going to be different on a day-to-day -day basis, but that's, that's roughly what I'm thinking. So anyways, thanks for sticking around this long, dudes. Like you're, you're champions. I appreciate you. Type in the, in the comments, goaded with the sauce. If you think that it, just to let me know that you made it to the end of the video. <laughs> All right, guys.